Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. It's getting interesting. So Pharaoh basically is saying, you have authorization and validation. I also have people who have authorization and validation, and they're going to show their credentials, and, and uh, you guys can compare notes, more or less. And, and so in Pharaoh's court, there are different levels of courtiers. And, and the Bible talks about three groups. First is a wise man, and then it talks about sorcerers and magicians. The Hebrew term that is translated as wise men referred to royal advisors. So these would be people, political advisors and so on, who, who advise uh, Pharaoh. And then it talks about sorcerers. And sorcerers there refers to people who uh, make uh, concoctions out of herbs and plants uh, uh, and, and, and work out things with herbs and plants. And then the magicians were people who had mastered in reciting spells and casting spells and activating the gods to work. So these are the groups of people around Pharaoh. But apparently, all of them, in addition to their various roles, also have ability to work things. Uh, and so Pharaoh sees what Moses has done, and he, he tells his courtiers, you also show this guy that you, you also have some power. So they did the same thing that Moses had done. Uh, they, they cast down their rod, supposedly, and, and, and it also turned into snakes. It's likely that the magicians of Pharaoh were used to these things. Probably they even competed among themselves to see who has more power to catch the Pharaoh's eye. So this was a normal thing. It's a power play for them. It's a spiritual power play. But the important lesson we learn here is that there is a counterfeit to God's power. There is always a counterfeit to God's power. So Pharaoh is not worshiping the God who made heaven and earth. He's not worshiping the same God that Moses is worshiping, but his people are doing some stuff. So there is always a counterfeit. The second thing you have to note is that not all supernatural acts are from God. Because, you know, sometimes we get taking when we see people demonstrate something. Either they, they make a prediction that comes true or they, they do something and, and it works. And just because it works, uh, most Christians become very open and say, oh, yeah, it works and it solved my problem. And so it must be God. There has to be uh, some other way to validate that something is from God apart from it works. Because if it works is the only way to determine that something is from God, then so many things work, and they are not from God. So this is what we are seeing here. Moses has worked. These magicians and sorcerers and wise men have also worked. And to all intents and purposes, if you were watching it, they've all produced the same results. But the passage clearly states that they did that with their enchantments. So they made incantations, they made declarations, they said something, and voila, something happened. And so for every Christian, the important lesson you're taking from here is there are other ways of validating the work of God beyond it works, beyond it blessed me, beyond I felt good about it, beyond uh, oh, yeah, I saw it with my own two eyes. Yes, you could have seen it with your own two eyes. You, it may have solved a problem of yours, but what was the source of the power? Is it an enchantment that is outside of God, or is it by God's spirit and God's authorization? May the Lord help us to make the right discernments from the acts that we see around us. Let us pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, help me to rightly discern between what is a right and what is wrong, the right spirit and the wrong spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May the Lord help each one of us. I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mensah Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.